So what's the difference between a QAnon and a regular Anon? Big question that I get, commonly misunderstood. I'll give you a hint. It's a nerdy computer metaphor, of course. The difference between a QAnon and a Anon is the same difference between a bit and a qubit. It's kind of a fun little play on words there. So computer bits are linear things, right? So they're either a zero or a one, they can't be both. And when you write the computer code, it compiles linearly. So it means that the computer reads what you're writing left to right and top to bottom, right? Normal, like how a person would read it. That's how computers now work. A qubit is a nonlinear thing, meaning it can be a zero or a one or anywhere in between at the same time. Now, there's a lot of common misconceptions out there about what that actually means. I hear a lot of journalists talking about this a lot and really just regurgitating a lot of uh, vocabulary words. And the more they regurgitate those vocabulary words, the more I see that they really have no practical understanding of what those vocabulary words really even mean. So I'm going to explain it to you real quick. So the fundamental thing you need to understand is how something could be a zero and a one or anything in between at the same time. And this is almost never covered. I don't think I've ever even seen it out there. So it goes a little something like this. How is something a zero and a one at the same time? And the answer is like that. Don't get mad at me, Q-Horde, that's not an Illuminati symbol, I'm just teasing them with the space-time jumping. Now, most of you are probably thinking, come on, weird computer guy, are you really trying to tell me that a quantum computer is a time-warping computer? Surely I would have heard that by now. And the answer is, absolutely, that is exactly what I'm trying to tell you. Check this out, here's what it looks like. This is what a quantum computer looks like. Pretty weird, right? It runs on lasers and graphene instead of electricity and silicon. A huge paradigm shift in computing. Some people call it an alien computer because it only works in conditions resembling outer space, meaning freezing and airless. These oil drum barrel looking things that they go inside are a cryogenic vacuum freezer that sucks out all the air pressure and cools the quantum computer down to around 460 degrees below zero, the temperature it needs to be able to operate. So what does that mean in practicality in real life? How does that affect how we work with computing? What that means is that a quantum computer can look at a lot of different options at the same time. Uh, so a quantum computer can be in two to the number of qubits states at one time, right? So if it's a one qubit computer, it's two to the one power, right? Two states at once. If it's a two qubit computer, you could be in four at once. If it's a three qubit computer, you could be an eight at once, and so on, so forth down the line until you get to an unimaginably huge number. Google currently has a 72 qubit quantum computer, meaning they have a computer that can be in two to the 72nd power simultaneous states at one time. So what that actually comes out to is 16 sextillion. Whoa! Now a lot of you are probably thinking again, come on weird computer guy, that's not a real number, you just made that up a sextillion? Get out of here. But that's not true. I actually didn't make that number up, a sextillion is totally a real thing. It goes million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion, sextillion. Right, because sext is the Latin word six. So again, just to try to help you wrap your head around how unimaginably huge that number is, let's write that out. Right, so we're gonna start over here. That right there is one million. There's a billion, a trillion, a quadrillion, a quintillion, a sextillion. Yeah, it's like that. So 
this is how many simultaneous states or how many options Google's quantum computer can be in right now at one time. Using that technology, Google was able to take a problem that would take all of the supercomputers on Earth 400,000 years to solve, and they were able to solve that problem in three minutes. Three minutes! Pretty spooky stuff, huh? And if I was to compare this technology to a person, like where it would be at in its life, it would be in the third trimester. Meaning, if it was a human baby, it would not even have been born yet. So you can only imagine where this technology is headed. And you can also try to imagine, or maybe not, where the military is at with this stuff, considering they're 30 years ahead of the commercial sector. So if you tie a bunch of quantum computers together, you get what's called the quantum internet. And if you subscribe, we're gonna be doing a series on all of the fun, neat, exciting, and very spooky things that this quantum internet can do. Including one of my favorite features I like to call instant messaging from the future. A super helpful feature for IT guys trying not to get murdered by the Royal Death Racket.